What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special, and as we speak, cryptocurrencies are rallying. In particular, Ethereum is up almost 10% right now, breaking above $3,700. So what is going on? Well, there's a couple of things going on, in particular with Ethereum, that I want to talk about. Um, the first is this craze of NFTs or non-fungible tokens, which I am going to be perfectly honest with you. A lot of NFTs goes whoosh, right over my smooth brain. Um, I don't really get it. I know a lot of people are cracking jokes about NFTs, but here's what I do know. NFTs and all the attention around NFTs is driving more people into the Ethereum platform because apparently all of these tokens, tokens are built on the Ethereum network, so it's driving more usage of Ethereum. So that's one big thing. The other thing is we had a fork back in August. I don't know if you remember, but it was known as the London Fork. And what it did was it paved the way for this eventual change to proof of stake for Ethereum. Again, a lot of this. Um, but what it did was it limited the payouts to miners. And like we've seen with Bitcoin halvings in the past, anytime you have any kind of a change that limits the payouts to the miners, it limits the amount that's in circulation. It's deflationary and it tends to drive up the value of the underlying token. And that's what we're seeing with Ethereum. Now, there's a couple things I want to... I want to also build on um, I mentioned Ethereum is going proof of stake now that's very big because there, there's two two main kinds of tokens that are out there and the way these transactions are verified there is proof of work which is your Bitcoin and Ethereum in its current form is proof of work where large amounts of energy are consumed to perform these complex calculations to verify a transaction now that's energy intensive and if you remember back in may when elon musk had his famous quote where he basically said that the the carbon emissions associated with bitcoin are troublesome and this and that and it drove a lot of the esg environmental social governance crowd away from bitcoin now since some of that has lessened and and it's not as big a deal anymore but in december ethereum goes proof of stake which is the other category now, proof of stake is much less energy intensive, and it basically it has you stake or wager your Ethereum that you're going to verify this transaction versus completing these complex calculations. And again, a lot of this right over my smooth brain, but I can tell you this, that the ESG crowd loves proof of stake versus proof of work. And you can see that in recent runs in altcoins like Cardano, which have done phenomenally well well cardano is the leading proof of stake coin right now but that's going to change when ethereum goes proof of stake when ethereum transitions from proof of work over to proof of stake in my opinion i think that's going to bring a lot of institutional money and a lot of a lot of this esg crowd is going to be driven into ethereum and that's going to be very bullish for the price action so let's take a look at some of these charts right now we are going to shrink my big fat melon of a head and let's take a look at where we're at right now now this is your ethereum chart and boy look at that run today um right now we're up about nine and a half percent it was up as high as ten percent earlier today we're at 36.91 we were around 3700 and you know me kevin was doing a a video about this earlier today and he had mentioned that ethereum was in this channel here where it was trading back and forth you know with support around 3000 and resistance up around 33 34 well we broke out of that channel yesterday and we are off to the races today and again i think with this impending change from proof of work over to proof of stake i think ethereum is going to have a very strong run in the coming months now again cryptocurrency is incredibly volatile large unpredictable moves so take all that with a grain of salt but here we are you know we've, we've made a new high at least in the recent couple of months and we're now getting into the area where we're going to be approaching that previous high around 4100 that we had back in may if we break through that it's you know who knows where the new ceiling is so that's that's an important one to watch now i don't buy ethereum uh, what i i mine ethereum like i said ethereum is still proof of work and so this computer right now that i'm actually doing this video on 
when I'm not making videos for my YouTube channel, this computer mines Ethereum. Now, it's not quit your day job kind of money, but it pays for the machine, right? I, I finance this machine, and the, the Ethereum that I mine covers the payments that I have to make on it. Um, so I'm, I'm following this story pretty closely. Again, I don't have a huge position in Ethereum, but as, as time goes on and I mine more, my position is growing, so I'm paying further attention. Now, in December, when Ethereum goes from proof of work over to proof of stake, I'm going to have to mine something else with my machine, and that's going to be either Ravencoin or Ethereum Classic, which I'm very not excited about those two coins. But what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably end up mining those coins and then exchanging them for Ethereum once they've been mined in any significant amount. I mean, fees are going to eat into me there. Um, but it's a way I can continue to use this asset, this computer, to generate a return for me. Now let's go over to Bitcoin. Again, shrinking my big fat, big fat head here. Bitcoin is interesting because... Having a good day, up 3% and change. Not anywhere near the kind of day that Ethereum is having. But if you notice, Bitcoin is also kind of trading in this sideways range. Again, props to meet Kevin for, for spotting that range-bound movement in Ethereum and calling that move today. Uh, but Bitcoin is still in this channel. And again, Bitcoin, this is the OG of cryptocurrency. And I still think this will remain the gold to Ethereum's silver. I apologize to my silver crowd out there. I know some of you guys are adamantly against crypto, um, but this is just an analogy. I'm not advocating as an alternative to gold or silver, just, just using the analogy. But I think as Bitcoin goes, so goes all of the coins. And that may change eventually. And this transition from proof of work to proof of stake in Ethereum may be what makes the Ethereum the dominant coin, but for now, it's still Bitcoin. I mean, in terms of market cap, it's not even close. Uh, keep an eye on Bitcoin here because we've got this resistance here at about 50,000, just under 50,000, where you know we've been coming up in these recent months, but we've been butting up against this level and we failed to break through a few times. If we break through this $50,000 level in Bitcoin, then we zoom out a little bit and now we're back towards talking about new highs or recapturing those previous highs in the you know high 50s even 60,000 range and if we break through them there's a lot of people who are still calling for a hundred thousand dollar in price in Bitcoin this year now I think that's pretty far-fetched because you're talking about more than doubling from the current level in a couple of months but Bitcoin has done this in the past folks this is it's not outside the realm of all real numbers um, definitely have strong support here around your 200-day moving average. And keep in mind here, you see this 50-day line creeping up. And you know I'm a big fan of the simple moving averages. And it looks like there may be the possibility of a golden cross coming up in the near-term future. And that may be one of the catalysts that sends us higher. So, you know, I, I've mentioned in some previous videos where the price of Bitcoin was crashing and how I didn't care. Um, and I want to I want to get back to that right now because I still don't care. Now I like to watch the value of my crypto go up. Everybody does. It's exciting. It's fun, especially on weekends when markets are closed and there's no prices to check. Um, but I still have a very long term approach to cryptocurrency, and I still mine my Ethereum day in and day out. And I what I do is I don't try to time the market with Bitcoin. I make a regular purchase every week automatically regardless of price. And to do that, I use an app called Swan. And uh, here's Swan right now. And I, I've only been using this since about February, but I, I really like this application. Very low fees. All right. I automatically buy $100 every week without looking. The fees are only about $1.50. I set that to autopilot. And... You know, compared to Coinbase, whose fees are just astronomical, I mean, I find this highly preferable. And it's just, it's a way to, for me to, let me move my face here. It, it's a way for me to just dollar cost average into Bitcoin. And again, if you think you're going to time the market in cryptocurrencies, you got another thing coming because this stuff is just way too volatile. And maybe some professional traders out there can actually make a profit doing that. But for now, I, we are... Bitcoin cryptocurrency is still in its infancy, and you don't want to get too creative right now. I think 
I think this is just a buy and hold and wait situation. I really do. Now, I have to say the butt covering, this is not financial advice. Don't touch a trade based on what you hear from me. Do your own de- research, your own DD. Arrive at a decision that's right for you based on your unique situation. But I like this app because of the automated feature and the low fees. So I automatically make my purchase $100 a week, whether it's up, whether it's down. And then every couple of months, I'll go in and I'll, I'll pull my coins off because you don't want to leave your coins on the exchange. That's important because it seems like every day there's another hack or another story of a security breach and coins being lost and people getting wiped out. So I keep the bulk of my cryptocurrency in cold storage in a hardware wallet. It's off the internet. There are no keys that can be saved or stolen anywhere. It's the single most secure form that you could have. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to use an app like this. Now, I'm going to post a link down in the description below to Swan. Full disclosure, this is an affiliate link. If you're interested in this application, you want to check it out and you click on the link down below, you'll get $10 in free Bitcoin for signing up. Again, that's an affiliate link. So full disclosure, I get a commission on that. I just, I want to be upfront with you guys. But I do stand by this service. I use it and I like it. I have had no problems yet. I have been able to pull my coins off and put them into cold storage where they're safe. So uh, I, I really like this platform. And again, it's because it's an automated feature. It's an automated purchase. I don't feel the need to watch it and try to time my trades. I just set it and forget it. And let's, I think we're, we can probably put this down now. I really believe that we're still in the very early days. Now, it's obviously, it's too late to get in on the ground floor when Bitcoin was at pennies. But I really do believe that by the end of this decade, Bitcoin will be trading above $1 million US. And that has nothing to do with the possibility of a hyperinflationary scenario. That mainly has to do with the fact that there are two halvings remaining in this decade. There's going to be a halving in 2024 where the payouts to miners gets cut in half. And then again in 2028, there's another halving where the payouts to miners is going to be cut in half again. Now, we've only had three halvings in Bitcoin's history. And every time there's been a halving in the subsequent year and a half, about 18 months following, the price of Bitcoin has risen anywhere from 5x to 10, 12x every time. So we're at 50,000 right now. Conservatively, if you get a 5x twice in the remaining decade, that puts you over a million right there, just taking the conservative end of what has happened every time there's been a halving. Now, the other fact that you have to consider is there's this in- inherent deflationary factor with Bitcoin, because if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to lose everything in Bitcoin, right? Again, I've, I've done that smooth brain thing. Don't get into Bitcoin if you don't know what you're doing. Spend a lot of time reading about it before you buy it, okay? Don't mess around, because if... If it's amateur hour and you go throwing money at this before you pay attention to what you're doing, you lose your private keys, those coins are gone forever and you'll never get them back. And a lot of people do this. I mean, there are stories of computers that had Bitcoin on them that were just thrown out and the private keys were lost. And that was in the early days when Bitcoin was in the pennies. And and that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars right now. Bitcoin gets lost every day. And every time a Bitcoin gets lost, it's out of circulation which means it's deflation. It's the opposite of j Powell and his printer going burr. And that happens every day. So besides the fact that you have these halvings where the payouts to the miners gets cut in half and there's less in circulation, you also have all these people who wander in it aimlessly and don't know what they're doing and lose their coins. That's also deflationary for Bitcoin. And on top of that, you have more and more institutional money every day is getting into cryptocurrency. Now, the institutional money, I think, is a little more bullish for Ethereum, because when Ethereum goes proof of stake, a lot of these pension funds and, you know, Fink and BlackRock and all those guys in their ESG crowd, regardless of your position on ESG, the fact is they don't like proof of work coins because of the environment. Well, when Ethereum goes proof of stake, that argument goes out the window. So we could see a large inflow of institutional money into Ethereum come December. And I think we're going to see the price run up anticipating that money as traders seek to front run the change and then whether it materializes or not if the institutional money doesn't materialize it'll probably come back down a little bit but if it does all-time highs so again don't get too cute 
cryptocurrency is in its infancy. It's it's only about ten years old, folks, and who knows where this is going. But I, I stand by my my bet, and you know, ten years from now, hopefully, when my channel has millions of subscribers, please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. I can come back on and I can say, I was right, Bitcoin's over a million, or I'll come on and say, boy, was I wrong. Remember ten years ago when young me, that idiot, went and said Bitcoin was going to go over a million. So. I look forward to that day, whether I'm right or wrong. Um, my money says I'm right, and I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Every week I make a regular investment, and while I sleep, I have my computer mining Ethereum for me. I would love to get into more mining. If it wasn't for this stupid chip shortage, I would have more miners running than I do right now, but that's just me. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I know a lot of you guys are silver bugs and precious metal guys. I am too, but I also like cryptocurrencies. So let me know, am I crazy? Is is it all nothing? Are we just paying high prices for uh, for nothing but air? Or is this the new digital real estate or the new digital gold? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Plus, if you know something else that's going on, if you follow these, these coins closely and you know there's something else that I'm missing, please let me know in the comments. I would love to, to research the topics and hopefully find a subject for another video in there. In the meantime, guys, I want to thank you for your time and for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. It would really help me out. In the meantime, live small and dream big.